Good morning everybody. Uh, those people that are just getting to the end of their Thanksgiving weekend uh, and you've gained weight. <laughs> well, you know, if you're getting a little older it goes on a lot quicker and comes off a lot slower. So, uh, we all make adjustments to, to our eating schedule, so the older you get, because eh, <laughs> it can be, um, well, detrimental, detrimental. So Jack and I, we've really cut back on our sweets. We're not eating too many sweets anymore. And when we do, we sure enjoy them. <laughs> and that's what you want to do. Give yourself treats, but... Uh, don't be like overloaded with them because sugar isn't good. So hey, this is supposed to be about plants. So we do, we have our orchids, <coughs> excuse me, they arrived, I wouldn't say, well, everything seemed frozen. They were very cold and hard, but not like frozen like a, a ice cube, but they were pretty frozen. So. They looked pretty good. But what happens when your orchids get a very cold uh, atmosphere around them? And, and these were in transit for two weeks in the mail system. And uh, what happens is, as soon as they get in the warm and they start to thaw, you see differences. So today we're going to look at the differences. We're going to try and pop them up to the best of that we can and uh, over here <coughs> I brought in remember the terrarium and in the bottom I put pebbles and um, charcoal to help uh, sweeten it because water is going to be sitting in it and a little lava rock and I have a screen over that with just a few pebbles on the top and I added, oh, three quarters water in here. So um, last night, both orchids went in the terrarium. They're out in the day. They're in at night. Now, I did read a lot um, of different places, finding out what I should do. And it seemed they do need that extra humidity in it. In the evening when they're transpiring I thought well I'll put them in in the evening and bring them out in the day and try and keep the humidity up for them a plastic bag is also suggested but I thought they're small and they will fit in this and I had it I might as well make use of it so today I'm going to show you each one and we're going to deal with it as as we are going to try to keep them alive <laughs> so um, I have all kinds of things here to show you today, so let's get at this right away. Let's see. Let's deal. Uh, Roehampton Orchids was where um, Georgia had ordered the orchids. So she had ordered a beautiful variegated leaf uh, fell and, and uh, a beautiful bloom on it. So we'll talk about that one after. But Roehampton had thrown in a beautiful little jewel orchid. And remember when I had my terrarium, I had wanted a jewel orchid back then. And of course, it's not working now, but maybe it's going to be useful. So um, I, I sort of knew what to do with them. And I know they're more terrestrial. They, they prefer for uh, more like African violets or they prefer a more... Um, soil like most house plants uh, type. So I'm going to show you it first and excuse me I got a cough. <coughs> excuse me I was running around out in the cold. It's uh, it's not freezing but it's cold. Uh, running out to the gazebo because that's where I keep all my uh, different products for the garden. So let's show you this one explain what's happening. So it's still in the container it came in. You should turn that light on. There we go. It's still in the container it came in. Now I'm going to pick it out very gently. 
for thing. Now they don't normally have big root systems and I think it's savable but I want to show you what's happening. If you can see these leaves they're they're got quite floppy and compared to these two bottom ones that held their color a little more these two and especially this one and one has died down here um, it, it maybe they were in this cup and it had a nice little lid like a little terrarium with a with a hole in the top so they were good and uh, um, I think what I'll do is repot it and hope to keep it going. But it doesn't look so bad, you know, overnight they just got up in the morning, they look so sad. So let's, let's pot this one up. And now, there's nothing wrong with this soil from Roehampton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep dumping it in there. I'm going to keep this good little cup, you know, emergency cup for a sad orchid. So we'll clean that up and we'll keep it. And I think I'd like to rinse this a little bit. I think just, well, I don't know. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I think I'll leave it. Um, there's a tiny little, the leaf that was just kind of off. We'll just clip that one off. Put it aside. Okay, so I'm not cutting any leaves off. I'm just going to leave it. I don't want to destroy it too much. Oh, there's a nice little clay ball in here. And so in here they got paralyzed, so I ran out to the shed and I got some of mine. And I also brought in, let's put that there, some of my potting mix I use when I start my seedlings in the spring. And there's a bit of perlite and some twigs and tiny bits of uh, just, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good and it always does good for my seedlings. <clears throat> And, uh, excuse me, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some of that in here. And I have a tiny little pot because I'm not going to just over pot it. And I have one of the small ones that you get orchids in sometimes. And it does have a drain hole on the bottom where... This old pot I picked up somewhere next for nothing. There's no drain hole, but this will sit quite high in it. And uh, when I put it in the terrarium at night, I'll put it in in this. And when I bring it out, it'll have the extra weight to protect it. So this was my plan. Now I'm going to mix some perlite. Probably some would say quite a bit. There, I think that's good. And now this is feeling quite dry, so I might as well add a little water. I got a new sink and I just have to show you it later because I've always had the double stainless steel sink and I'll tell you why we changed it, but it was in the house when we got it. And <clears throat> Anyway, Jack surprised me and took me to town. We went hunting for a sink. I love it. Wait till you see it. It's just so good. Okay, so I know it's a little overabundant, but we can use some of this a little bit later. So I've got lots of house plants. I can add it to the top. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to put some of this. Now, it doesn't have a lot of roots. Um, let's see, poor little thing, there, I pretty well got it in the center, now they spread out, but first we got to get it to grow, and then we'll worry about where it's going, and let's, we'll get some growth happening here before we get too adventurous, because I do like to be adventurous with my pots, but it's part of the fun doing this so 
Wow, I'm surprised we are getting quite a bit of this mix, almost like it was planned. So I think that that'll be good. It's still got a good drain hole. It does have some tiniest little openings on the side, but they're, they're almost non-existent. I think it was from a mini ballot sometime because I keep all the pots. You never know. It's nice to have like the gazebo because I keep all my pots out there. I keep uh, the bark. I keep everything out there. I seal it good. Now he looks a little more established. So let's show you. Let's get this one in the pot. And even those top leaves that are looking a little limp like this one. This one here is looking a little sad. But these two at the bottom are more, I think, looking good. So it's pretty firm in this pot now. And uh, it's damp. I don't have to water it. And this has no air holes, so it can drain into the bottom of the pot if it needs to. And it will sit here and uh, my hands. so at night it will go in the terrarium or even the day for this one and uh, just while it's recouping. So you know, for I could put it in here for now. Now at night I miss the terrarium a little bit, but there is enough water in there right now that uh, there's more humidity than there is in this room because it's winter and the furnace is on. So unless they're near one of my fountains or uh, misters, then there's more room in that area where they're all together because a grouping always is much better for keeping your humidity better. So. Okay, we've done good with that. There's a little bit I can share with some plants. Now, I should maybe take that out of there if I'm going to use this bowl. Let's put it in here. There. A little bit won't hurt. So, now, Jack, he, he felt so sorry for this one. Um, what did I do with that tag? I lost my jewel orchid tag, but I know it's around somewhere, so we'll find it. But this one is Fel Sogo Vivian, and it is from Georgia. She was so nice to send this beautiful gift to me and it's nobody's fault that we just had the most terrible weather could be. So I'm going to bring this over here and we are going to, we're going to have a look at the roots now. <laughs> Jack felt sorry for it. Oh no, don't worry. I was, he, he thought these leaves shouldn't be because they were just hanging so bad. So he made this, this contraption. So I want you to see how they look, so I'm going to take it off for now. He did it very gently, because you can see here, very sad. There's uh, white marks, top and bottom of the leaves, when they thawed. And there's some real terrible bends, where when we unpackaged it, it was like sitting straight up, because it was frozen. Well, next to frozen. So... Um, this is how it's looking, and it's pretty sad, but it's alive. And there's, there's quite a few uh, white spots. You can see them here. Uh, this is not good. Over time, uh, Brad's greenhouse, when I first started orchids, I used to watch him a lot. He's on the coast, and he did do a video with one that he had put in his garage and the damage, and it was very similar to this, and this later pitted. It didn't lose his leaves, but his only spent one night in a cold garage, and he left the door open on a cold day, so this spent two weeks. 
uh, although the heating pad would have worked. So we want to look at the roots, but we're going to save this moss and the little pot. So we're just going to take this moss off and see what we got. I just want to make sure that there's no rotting things in here because if one is rotting then it will just make the others rot. So I just want to look at it and uh, we'll make a few little changes. So you know the roots are looking pretty good. So I'll show you a close up. Now we do have some nice roots. It's lucky that Roehampton sent out the orchids because this survived two weeks in the winter mail. It had a nice heat pack, but I think the later left it in cold, cold places. Where I think it was um, the other company that ships. Anyway, we won't talk about companies. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's what happened. It just wasn't in a warm place. And then it was two weeks in the box. So this is very good moss. It, it, I did kind of miss it a little. I haven't really watered it a lot. I was just hoping. Um, I did read don't over water the bottom while the leaves are trying to catch up. But there's nothing. There's one tiny little spot up here, but nothing. So we're looking good for the roots. So now. I have picked this pot. It's not overly, I really wanted to put it in one of these uh, six inch pots. Now I watered early. I usually water on Wednesdays, but I had watered on Tuesday. So this was like halfway to Wednesday again. And I gave these a little run through because they like to be a little moister. And I was hoping to put this in one of those pots, but Maybe later, uh, although these do fit in the terrarium, the six inch ones, so, but maybe later it, it just, it's not happy. So it's not ready to be in a new pot. So I thought this one, and I think um, at the bottom, I'm gonna put some, I have some lava rock, and you have to rinse this off, at least this type that I got. It, it gets lots of black off of it. So I, I always rinse it. I was lucky to find a bag of it. I think it's for, for yard or stuff, but hey, I was happy to find it. It's nice stuff. So then I rinse it all off and I'm going to put some of that in the bottom just for a, a little extra drain. And <clears throat> Then what I have here is when I did the last potting into the six inch baskets, um, I had some leftover bark. And what I like about this bark, um, I want to use this moss. Let's put the moss here. Now, what I liked about this bark was if I use a little, I'll take, these are all smaller pieces from the bottom of a huge two liter bag, huge, up to my waist bag, so. But they've been soaking in, in uh, seaweed extra for a long time now. And they're smaller pieces. So I thought, okay, I'm going to uh, still use the moss, but I'm going to mix it in like I did this beautiful moss. But with me and moss, I just don't want to take the chance. And I don't want to overstress it by like just putting it in bark. So um, what I'm going to do is mix it nicely. And the roots are looking good. So let's put, you know, some of the more, um, let's put some of that in here and some bark. Now we're going to make a tiny little hole in here. In the center I'm making a tiny hole and I notice there is a fair amount of moss in there where I've made this hole. Okay, there is a tiny little piece there I took off. But I'm very happy with that. So we, we, we might be able to save it. 
So now I'm just going to sit it in here and I'm going to I'm going to take some of these longer pieces. Now they're soaking up some of the seaweed extract from this bark. So I'm not planning on watering it right away. So this way it's getting a little used to bark and it's getting some of the natural um, fungi that's in this bark. And I think it's a good thing. So, um, I think I think we did pretty good. We have. Oh, we'll talk about that later. Maybe. <laughs> you know me. I get talking, and and then I quit thinking. Like, <laughs> oh dear, it's snowing outside. <laughs> And I did research and I looked what some people have done and I'm very aware. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it out in during the day and putting it on a little saucer on top of the misting bowl that I have on the counter. It's kind of my nursing station. But at night, after misting the inside of the container, I'm going to put it in. There, so I'm putting a little bark on the top. There's one kind of dry, sad root. I should mist it a little bit. Yeah, I do. Now, if you use different containers for uh, misting your flowers, then you also have containers that look like them that have uh, maybe Windex in or something. Just be careful. What Jack did is we have this green marker and it, it marks and doesn't ever come off. And this, this is marked so that I know this is just water from my orchid. So I'm just going to give the surface area and that one very dry root as I poke it in a bit. There. So what, what may happen, I'm thinking what may happen, I think we're going to save it. Um, these leaves will probably, over time, slowly just die off. And I'm hoping next spring growing season uh, that we see some nice new leaves coming and the start of a nice healthy plant. So we have to make an effort to save this plant. Uh, the flower on it is so beautiful. And the leaves were beautiful. I mean, it just didn't, oh, the poor thing. I, I had worse ideas than this. So um, there we are. We're in the pot. This pot fits in a terrarium. So at night, it, both of them will actually fit in there if I put the jewel orchid in the little basket in there. So uh, there we are. So there's not too much uh, holes on the bottom. The bottom is not going to dry out as fast. The top will dry out quicker. And if I feel it needs it, I will mist it. But I think I'm just going to leave it for now. So we have the two of them done. And uh, I have some left moss that I will not throw out. So we'll put that there. And I'm not sure what I did with the tag from that one. Now, that, that goes outside and so does that. Now I want to discuss... So, I did make some... Uh, they are not tolerant to frost, jewel orchids. Well, none of them, neither of them are. Um, but the jewel orchids does like good drainage. It doesn't want to be sitting in water, but they like it like a 60% humidity. So um, Miss Orchid Girl has a very good, um, where she potted one up, a large one. So I will link that in the description. So, but I did want, let's talk about these baskets now. Um, the first ones I used were the ones from 
uh, Marianne, and this is uh, Fel Sogo Becker, and if you remember, it's pyloric, and it still has a bloom coming. So, so far so good with this one. Now they are getting water ran through and you can really tell I'm liking these, these baskets and I just ran them here so I thought, well, I'll just let them sit and kind of drain out. And uh, this was a, a banana, pioneer banana, banana tree, but it's nice and heavy, it holds the basket, no problem until I get my windows and we can organize something so they can hang there. So um, I'm going to show you all the ones that went, okay, this one here, of course, uh, this, yeah, this is the bigger one for Marianne, and it's, this is Fell Mini Mark, and I want to show you how she's doing. So these are eight inch basket. So she's doing pretty good, and, and, I, and they're getting that second, they're not soaking, you can soak them, but they're getting that second run through just with some warm water from the tap. And uh, this one is from June the 11th, and it is Melatasia Charles Marden. And it is, seems to be doing quite well. So the baskets, of course, a couple of these got moved into the baskets when I started using them. Now, the melatonopsis, and the reason I switched to the baskets, was because it was getting pleated leaves. And uh, so it'll be a while before I notice, but I notice there's one tiny little new leaf coming now, and it does not look pleated. But it, it, you have to, I go around with my little, it's right in here. Now that new one coming in here, I can get it. It's kind of like backing up. There it is, you see it? It is not pleated where these ones had pleated, so it seems happier in here with how I potted it up, so we'll keep a good eye on that one. And that's a good thing, you know, your plants are talking to you, and you have to listen. So, um, that's those ones, and uh, I've seen I had those little ones, I thought these ones are from April 28th, and this is Fel Sherianna. Okay, um, anyway, let's. I know people keep giving me lessons, but somehow it doesn't compute for me. So there we go. And it's doing good. It's doing good. And one more. Do you remember Alfinia? She was in flower from. When we got her in April, the end of April, she was in flower until a couple weeks ago. So, <clears throat> you can see where the spike was, and I'm leaving it. And this leaf did come damaged. Um, so, it's doing good, the roots look good, seems happy, so we're not doing anything with that. So let's put that there safely. There. Okay. Now for a few fun things. Uh, got a new sink because the stain is still all those pieces under the sink. They they kept rusting. It was very poor stainless steel. <clears throat> and then one day Jack says, well, we're going to town, but didn't really say why. So um, it turns out we were looking at sinks, and I had mentioned G. And so this sink is a little deeper than your normal double stainless steel sink. I'm going to show you a close-up. And uh, <clears throat> it has the big and the small, which I'm loving. But I'll show you a close-up. Boy. 
<coughs> Excuse me. I don't have a cold. Okay. Um, now, we went to the thrift store and look at this. I just saw this and it was like a dollar or something. Someone had painted every inch of this and I should have did a, a, a before picture. Had paint and it hadn't it, the, the leaves were all green and the, those folks were all brown and <sighs> it was a little gaudy and the paint was all sticky. So we, we got this spray, spray stuff that takes off paint and I scrubbed and scrubbed and got back to how it had looked before it was ever painted. But wait till you see this. I mean, for a dollar, I fell in love with it. It has this little door that opens so you can reach in there. You can get a hand in if you want to do something. It's a nice wire basket like I have some of my orchids in. It has a little opening here. You can open it all back. So, we're not too sure what's going to go in the gilded cage, but we did love it. And I think it'll also be hanging as a real nice, isn't that nice? So, any ideas? I don't know. If you want to, leave a comment if you might give me an idea. Oh, talking about ideas. <clears throat> When somebody leaves a good comment, I've decided I should start like printing it out and letting you know. So I, I have to apologize for failing to do that in the past, but I'm starting. So here was a good comment from Pugsy, Cindy Pugsy7. <laughs> and she says, just to let everyone know the Coco Mat baskets are wonderful for other epithites. You know what I mean. Rick Racks, Christmas, Cacti, Orchid Cacti, etc. <clears throat> My staghorn ferns do so well in them. You can place the baskets in a bowl and let them soak for a bit with the benefit that the water will all drain away as soon as you take them out again. You can also buy the cocoa matting separately and refresh the liners, although I find they last a long time. So, thank you very much. It was very interesting. <clears throat> you think I was at a football game and hollering all weekend, but I wasn't. I wasn't. It was just me. Okay, um... So, we did want to share that with you because I am lo loving them almost as much as my traffic cones. And speaking of traffic cones, so, oh, and I had because uh, from Canada I had ordered uh, three, uh, I got them through Ecstasy online, three baskets that came with the hangers, and these are the six inch ones. And I had one left that I hope one day this one will go in, but we will see how it does. Okay, now, traffic cones. I don't know how many of, of you um, had seen this one that uh, we had picked up for $2. We had picked this stand up for $2 and thought we did good, but there was some broken parts, and when Jack went to... Uh, solder it to try and fix the broken parts. It was real cheap metal so it just like fell apart. So we had hung around in our pile of stuff we keep and found these legs. So he soldered these legs on because it lost its legs and uh, then I painted it. He braised the legs on. I knew there was the right word. He braised the legs on and um, so then I painted it and fair thing, I always put on the traffic cones when I paint them and on anything like that that sits outside, I use fair thing um, to uh, usually a couple coats of its outdoor uh, water based fair thing. So 
Now this will be waiting for an orchid when they're in bloom. I don't want to start moving them around uh, when they're not in bloom. So it'll be waiting and he fixed that and I painted it. So we were busy doing that. And he has actually made another stand that um, I'm not sure it's going to hold a traffic cone, a big one, but we'll see what we do with it. <clears throat> so, sorry for being choked up. I'm not sick or anything. I get bronchial sometimes. So, um, happy end of Thanksgiving, and uh, I hope this all helps. Now you know how they look. Any comments are very much welcome. And if you want to send pictures of your orchids to Carolyn Orchid Friends at gmail.com, you're welcome to. And I will post them on the community if you want me to. And other people can share and comment on them. And I will put that also in the description below this video. So thanks for joining me. And we'll be watching how these do over time. And I think, I think they're going to make it a very struggling make it. So, bye for now. And thanks for joining me. Oh, the sink, the sink, the sink. Okay. Sorry, we almost forgot the sink. You wanted to see the sink. Here I am with the camera. Okay, here's the sink. It has these wires. These are so nice because when I water my orchids, they sit on them. They don't scratch the bottom. And I like, because sometimes we don't have many dishes and plates and that, they fit in this side. I'm actually using less hot water with this. And I can rinse into this or I can use this one. I could use this as a drain for the dishes, but I have this drain that I always had and I'm very happy with it so that's our new sink and it's called um, Artike A-R-T-I-K-A so very happy with it we had the plumber put it in it's it's so nice I am loving it so next watering day will be fun Oh, that's why I watered early on Tuesday, because the plumber was coming. So, now I'll say goodbye. Bye for now.